Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Comic Books NYC. Happy International Star Wars Day. It is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Uh, and I threw an invite out to some of my friends here in the community to uh, share some of the, the nerdy Star Wars uh, good goodness from their collections, whether it's comic books, toys, uh, memorabilia, art, uh, pops, what have you. So uh, you're going to see a little bit of everything tonight from uh, some of these community members and their Star Wars collections. So without uh, wasting too much time, I'm just going to bring everybody on all at the same time here. So uh, let me just bear with me with the stream yard. So we got Bakes, the snake in the house. We got yay, yay. Workeries. We got JP. We got Mr. Garrell. What's up, Garrell? And then we got JB, Discovery Bay Comics. What's up, my friend? This Good to see all you guys. Good. We'll also be joined potentially by uh, Tacoma Comics at some point. So I'm going to do a little uh, rotating in and out. But happy Star Wars Day to you guys. Uh, may the fourth be with you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me. Cool. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. a start. One of my well, favorite days start. of the year, actually. <laughs> You're right. Never. It's one of my favorite days of the year, also. And so is tomorrow, Cinco de Mayo. It's a it's a nice it's a nice <laughs> yeah, little back to back, back to back, uh, back to back celebration. Uh, so we got Sharon in the house. She says a live stream. It is yes. I like that 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 Yoda language on there. Uh, Magic Lasso puts cinnamon buns in his hair to watch the show properly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> how does an Ewok get from one place to another? <laughs> Ewoks. Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> ah. that pretty good last I'll time. Pretty that good. One. I don't know. Uh, uh, I have my phone. I have no idea where it went. And your Yoda voice. <laughs> All right, Flash Ray videos is saying I can share some of my Star Wars collection. People would like to see it. Tell me where to send pics. Um, that's that's a little bit of a dangerous request. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am on Instagram at Comic Books NYC, so uh, you know, try your luck there if you want. To. Uh, <laughs> I hope they are Star Wars picks. That I, I, I <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chris Barrett, what's up, Chris Barrett? Good to see you. Another big Star Wars fan in our community. Good to see you, brother. Thanks oh, for no. by. Uh, Unruly Simeon is in the house. What's up, brother? Thanks for being in the chat. So we got a bunch of cool people in here. Look, why don't we get Why don't we get started? I, I, I'm hosting, so I don't want to go first. Um, somebody you want to volunteer to go first? Anyone want to raise their hand? Show a few things. You can show like yeah, four I'll, I'll go first. Actually, yeah, I'll go first. All right, you know? dude, let's, uh, <laughs> let's go with JB first. All right, let me find his. Uh, it's All right, there so, it is. You know, when we talk about uh, Star, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank first, thanks. Oh, dude, I'm excited, excited to have you to be here. Um, when we talk about Star Wars, it hits home for me because I'm 47. Do the math on that. You know, <laughs> I was standing in line with my dad when the first movie came out, and from that point forward, he always took me out of school for you know the first showings, and we were always yeah. you know standing in line in front of some crazy theater with all the partying that was happening in line back in those days. Cause back in the day, the line was a party. So star Wars hits home for me. You know, I've, I passed it down to the kids. And when you said, Hey, we had an opportunity to talk about star Wars. I'm like, man, I don't even know where to start, man. You're talking comic books. You're talking toys. I got toys. I got Funkos. I got all kinds <laughs> of stuff. I wouldn't, I wasn't even sure where to start. I wanted to start by saying star Wars is important to me. And, nice. and, and, I think it's important to a lot of people. Now, I don't take it over the top crazy and start yelling at Disney for ruining Star Wars because I don't think they actually ruined it. I think they did their best to fan service as many people as they could. Would I have done it different? Absolutely, I would have done it a little bit different. But you know what? In the end, I think what they've produced has been pretty damn good. Now, my sweet spot is still in the 70s. So when we get into that, I am about... Star Wars Episode 1, 2, and 3 with my all-time favorite being The Empire Strikes Back, right? You mean 4, 5, and 6, but I know what, what you mean. Sorry, 4, 5, and 6. So when we get into those, um, and in uh, Revenge of the Jedi, wait a minute, Return of the Jedi, yeah. You know, I started with some of the toys and some of the favorite characters. Again, I, awesome. I was, this is the sweet spot for me. I had these toys as a kid. Now... Now, of course, you know, I've got them unopened and hanging on the wall in plastic, which reminds me of this uh, Saturday Night Live sketch. I don't know if you saw it where the kids are playing with Star Wars, but their dads are like teaching them how to play with the toys. <laughs> Hilarious. If we could find that clip later on in the show and share it, it's just absolutely phenomenal. 
But here I am with Star Wars toys unopened, and these bring back memories because these are some of my favorite characters that I would play with. These are my first pick, you know, first pick right here. First pick when when uh, your friends came over and it came time to play. Now, my children growing up, you know, I have two daughters. They saw these things hanging on the wall, and I don't know how long I've had them hanging on the wall, but these things have been hanging on the wall in our bonus room. They got dust all over them, geez, uh, for years, and these have a comic book in the back of them. I don't oh, know cool. if you guys have ever seen any of these, so there's actually a comic book in with this, and and I had a you know a nice series of these. And the kids didn't know even know who these characters were. And I'm like, oh, well, wait till we start to see Star Wars. Now they know who they are and they want to open everything and play with everything. <laughs> can't can't play with these, man. These are dads. <laughs> these are dads. Maybe someday when I'm gone, they'll crack all these things open. But I've got a nice little run of these. I think it's uh, one through four on these, which uh, comes with a couple of toys and a comic book. Those are some of my favorite items. And my dad was a Star Wars nut, too. I mean, like, big time Star Wars nut. And some of the stuff that he had... One second, sorry. No, no worries. Oh, down goes... Uh-oh. Heard, heard something drop. I don't know how many lightsabers we're going to see, but he had a <laughs> heck of a lightsaber collection. And, um, and now, I guess, you know, it passed down to me. But these lightsabers are some of the funnest things. And then... I'm not sure about who your favorite character was, but mine was Han Solo. In my perfect world, Han Solo had a lightsaber. That's just the way I played it as a kid. I don't know about you, you know. In the one scene where he cut open that uh, the tauntaun and said, "Oh, you think they smell bad on the outside?" That was one of my favorite scenes because that was the one time Han Solo got to wield the lightsaber. One of my last favorite collectible pieces is Ooh, that's the 33rd crazy. scale blaster, the Han Solo blaster that my dad had up on the wall for many, many years. And uh, those are some of the highlight pieces. Now, recently, I think you guys have seen, I've shown this one off a couple of times, and I'll, I know that we got a long show. But the kids know I'm a big Star Wars fan, and I started collecting Funkos. So they got me this for my 47th oh, birthday. Wow. Nice. And this thing is amazing. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I, th I think so I've seen you post it to Instagram, but it's huge. It's up close like thing this is on video. massive. So cool. But that's one of the uh, star pieces of my Funko Pop Star Wars, along with, um, you know, a couple of these other ones, because uh, Scott Farr was happy enough to liquidate some of that Star Wars collection. So I could go on and on with the toys as we you'll go. Get, you'll get another turn, man. That's, that's, but some that's, cool how, we, oh, that's how we kick off the show, everybody. Good stuff, bro. Just a, just a run of that, Star that Wars That giant Millennium Falcon is like mind bolt blowing. That's like, it doesn't even look like a pop, you know? It's like, uh, it's so big. Wow. Wow. Man, all right. What else we got? <laughs> all right. Um, any, anyone want to volunteer to go second, or should I go second? I'll go. Pick somebody. <laughs> All right, big. Let's go, with big. All right, let's go with me. Big. So he's into the Star Wars with kind of a mashup. I got picked these up at a con. These are mashups with uh, World War II and Star Wars. So you can see the X-wings up in there and the, the Death Star off in the distance, and then the uh, the troops walking down uh, the dirt road. Uh, this hits home for me too, because Star Wars. And then uh, you know, my grandfather was a a uh, paratrooper, and he jumped on Normandy and uh, was a prisoner of war, escaped, you know, barely. So it, it kind of hits home on both fronts that I grew up on these. Uh, this one here with the at ats. Those are this. awesome, dude. I'm trying to get the glare out, but yeah, it's it's really cool. The black and white. Uh, got I believe the company is Thirteenth Floor, and the artist or whatever is uh, Billy Ludwig. I actually bumped into him at my first con and I just thought it was a guy selling these things. Come to find out it was him. And, you know, I was going to buy them anyway because I've been following it on Instagram for a while. And uh, he offered to sign it and I was like, oh, you did these? Awesome. So these ones are a little like, I like this one, Sweet. the TIE Fighter. Those are really cool. That's really clever. Someone come up with that concept. Yeah, that's awesome. You see so much like cool mashup and hybrid stuff with Star Wars. That's and awesome. this one is like 
see Chewbacca back there. Chewbacca in the background. Old war photo with Chewbacca. Yeah. And there's so many more, man. They'll ma they mash them up with like some Shogun and some Samurai and, and a bunch of other things too. Uh, other than that, uh, right now I guess I could show off this. This was oh. part of an AOK from oh, NYC. Wow. This is yes. a film strip on this of Yoda, which is awesome. Who doesn't yeah. like Yoda? It's a 70 millimeter film strip from uh, that one's from uh, from a. Uh, Empire episode? Strikes Back. Empire, yeah, from from episode five. I wish I could get Ian on here. Wait, do I, how many how many people can be on at once? Six. Six. Uh, okay. Hey, if you want to rotate us through, you can pop me in the back or. Oh, that's right. You just you had your turn, right? Yeah. Um, all yeah, right. Pop well, me in the back. You had your yeah. turn. Get out. That's, that's, your turn, right now. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally cool. Uh, man. <laughs> this was awesome, man. I, I really love this. And uh, this, thank you again. You know, Kyle, oh, no worries, dude. A great NYC AOK. -OK. And this is definitely yeah, that was something a Star, that I'll keep forever. Yeah, that was a Star Wars themed AOK. -okay. There was a lot of Star Wars. Yeah, there. we. I hit you up with some too. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, some of the stuff I'm going to show is from Bake also. So. so yeah, that's all I got for now. All right, word. All right. Um, so I'm going to bring in uh, Tacoma yeah, real quick. Uh, yo, Tacoma, what's going on, hey, brother? Hey, how you doing? Yo. Good to see you, man. Thanks for what's joining up? us here. Yeah, no problem. Is there a special day today or something? I heard it might be a special day today. Maybe. Just maybe. Um, what's up, the, Mark? But now the real holiday house? is what? On the 6th, right? The what holiday? Revenge of the 6th. Uh, no. It's actually Revenge of the 5th, but, it yeah. also, but Fifth. it's also more people know about it, uh, know it as Cinco de Mayo, so it kind of gets overlooked, I guess. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm going to petition uh, to just bypass Cinco de Mayo and put it over to the 6th. Yeah. Cinco de 6th. It's uh, Drinko de 6th. Um, all right. Uh, so Tacoma, do you want to get, let's, why don't you, why don't you share some stuff? We fresh sure. off, fresh into the I, show. Let's, I'll let's go until you stuff. think I've gone too far. Then just tell me, shut up and go away. <laughs> um, this was a present from a friend of mine. Oh, and awesome. as far as Whoa. I know, it's a one of a kind. Um, I don't know if they were manufactured in large amounts. I've never seen them before. Um, and, huh. and you know, I'm not a prequels fan. Because I'm that old that the prequels destroyed my childhood fantasy, but I, <laughs> for for a character that I don't like, and you know, battle droids were kind of the worst of the worst. Though I guess that the lower was, on the totem pole for sure. Prequel. Yeah, that was the first plan. I just always thought this was such a cool, welded, made out of like machine parts sort of thing. So I've I've always dug this one. It's got like a, a kind of a place in the top of my collection. Um, Ooh, I've got red magic marker on my pocket. This is one of my favorite jackets. Um, uh, I got this because my wife ordered me the Boba Fett t-shirt, and the company sent me this hoodie instead and a Darth Vader hoodie done in the same style. So who knows? They messed up, and, and I got lucky for it. Uh, R2 over here, when I had batteries in it, um, this was one of those ones where you could, like, teach it things and call things and it would actually respond like r2 come and it would it would drive towards you and stuff so that was kind of uh a really cool one because I think it was one of the first things my wife spent money on when like you know, early in our relationship where she actually brought me a star wars or you know fandom related thing which was always kind of cool um interesting story back in 97 before the movie was released when i was in my early 20s on my own with like a first full-time job. I went to Toys R Us at midnight, stood in line for episode one figures thinking, oh, this will be worth a lot someday. And uh, I spent $500 that night, which, you know, 20 Damn. years ago. Nice. And that was the most I'd ever dropped, like, like by far, not even like a little bit, but like way far the most I've ever dropped on like a thing. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to do it right. Because when I went to college, my mom gave away all my Star Wars toys. so. I'm going to recollect. Well, I sold almost every single one of them because they were, you know, Phantom Menace toys, but I kept the Jedi. So I've got um, Kia D. Mundi, who I've always thought was cool uh, in the Clone Wars. And even, even in Revenge and Attack, I kind of liked him. Um, got a little English accent, very proper there. Mace Windu, who, <laughs> if you watch the last Clone Wars episode, really kind of. No spoilers. Bake, uh, yeah. Bake hasn't seen it yet. 
My bad, man. You, dude, it's so good. I'm not saying it's bad. Just, you know, Mace's character. Yeah. We'll see. Um, what is this one? Luminara Unduli. Uh, is the yeah. cool. Uh, Scythe Tin. Damn. Cool. And, uh, and this one I don't really know. Nikto. Nikto. And I couldn't find Kit Fistos anywhere. Um, I don't know if I never got got him or if i just don't have him but uh somehow I, I i couldn't find him so uh i've got tons of these somewhere but i just wanted to highlight the jedi i bought i bought a lot of them recently for like rogue one and uh force awakens not so much uh the last two um just because i'm trying to trying to cut down this is cool i uh made this at the when disney acquired star wars they had these build a droid workshops at disney um and so you got to put together your own uh, own R2 unit or your own uh, mech droid with different parts. But I mainly got R2 body and legs, except for the middle leg is green and the Yoda hat there. Dude, that's crazy. Um, Dude, you weren't kidding, man. You're, you, you, got, you can just rampage all day. Well, you, tell me, you tell me when to stop, and I'll let somebody else go. <laughs> I'm going to I'm have to let the Dorkies get their turn. But, but uh, yeah, real man. quick. Real quick, I'm going to say hello to some, uh, some more people that showed up here. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rod yeah. Weekend's in the house. I'm not sure what he's congratulating me on, but hey, what's up, Rod? Uh, it's your boy, won Alex. something from 36. Oh, okay, so 36. Oh, dude, 36. I, was so, I dropped in. That was amazing. Okay, so I must have won his uh, live art auction. He was drawing this cool Mandalorian piece live and auctioning it. Oh, um, nice. nice. So thanks, dude. I'll, uh, I'll square up with you after the show. Um and all right so uh th thanks everybody for hanging out this might be a long stream we got a lot of guests uh we got a lot of star wars nerdiness but next up and i think um the dorkeries uh, are a fantastic channel if you're not familiar with them go go sub them up i, I gotta add their link to the description below uh, i forgot to do that sorry uh but but uh not only do they have a great channel they got a great collection and they are big star wars fans so i'm happy to have them on here uh, and uh, share a little with you guys. So, hey, you guys all have really fun collections. I Thank love you. the World War II photos. Those are pretty awesome. Yeah, right. those are cool. Yeah. So I, I think kind of like JP, man. I mean, like Star Wars is what started it all. I mean, even uh, when before we met, I found out uh, that well, before we started dating, because I've known her since she's like two. But when she started dating, she, I saw that she was into Star Wars, and I'm like, mm, this is going to work out. <laughs> I mean, there's even a chance, like, <laughs> I may have been conceived at the drive-in theater where Star Wars was playing. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a slight possibility that that happened. Uh, so kind of like everybody else, when, you know, when I was a kid, uh, and I was one of those kids that, yes, I played with the Star Wars toys, but I always kept them in really good shape so i got oh. my, my vintage Star Wars. <laughs> was awesome from everybody <laughs> what? so and what's funny if you look at the little the band from java there the little max rebo band yeah those kids always lost those things like crazy i've even got if you can see it there i've even got the little flute uh that they plays as well so is Salacious Crumb sitting there? What's that? Is there yeah. did Nick come with Salacious Crumb? Yeah, yeah, the guy sitting right in front of Jabba. Yeah, okay. Holy yeah. crap, dude. I'm, I'm embarrassed yeah. to show what I got now. Oh. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what, what's, what's cool is uh, they're, they're really minty. Um, and I don't know if y'all remember, but you know, there at the end, Canner stopped uh, making, or they, they kind of lost their license. I don't know what it was, but there were the last 17 figures. And one of the really hard ones to find was Han Solo with his carbonite. Oh, so this is the oh the God. last seventeen. And what's what's super cool is you just put them in there, you know. I mean, that's when you were a kid and you got to recreate oh. Han Solo going into the carbonite. Man, that's good stuff, right? You're blowing my mind right now. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> <Man. laughs> like our son had those like in his room but we were kind of always those parents that were like you can play with it but like barely move don't move, don't move. <laughs> but it's <laughs> ours 
<laughs> I heard my son, uh, he was watching a little kid the other day and they were putting toys up and my son was like, stop it, stop it. We don't throw the toys. We sit the toys. <laughs> and of course they were not the Star Wars toys, but our kids even are like, don't break anything. Um, and that probably started because of Star Wars toys and as our, in our childhood. So we're going to keep the Jabba theme going. And of course, you know, I've got the, the Funko Pop set there as well. Oh, now you're just um, showing off. That's wow. right. <laughs> yeah, Carol, seriously, man. <laughs> so Jabba looks things, so cool. Uh, yeah, thanks, I've JB, for dropping in their uh, link in the chat. Make sure you guys go sub up the door, please. So one of the things I, I did not like about the original, like back in the day, the vintage, they didn't have Slave Leia. So you know what? There's Slave Leia and Funko Popcorn. I'm constantly trying to get Lady Dorkery to dress up as Slave Leia constantly. And <laughs> Tough it, sell. <laughs> I really, when a dude earlier, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. You can tell, you can pop back up on the chat, was offering to send pictures. I was a little concerned that might be what right? you might be getting. I don't do uh, I don't do Slave Leia, but <laughs> All right, my, my, about as far as I go. My, my last my last uh, Java is oh, Java Lego. Right. Oh my god, <laughs> so Lego? Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, wow, Star Wars Legos. Yeah, so uh, I'm glad the Dorkeries decided to crash the party. Damn, yeah. that's, that's yeah. amazing. Can I follow them and show what I have now? Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're next, Carol. I don't want to. Yeah, go ahead, Carol. <laughs> I think I changed my my my. I just changed my game plan on what my first round is. <laughs> I was gonna show like I was it's gonna show like little knickknacks. Like here's a pin. Here's like a magnet. <laughs> you know. Uh, I think I'm gonna show my Grail comics for my first round. That, I can't top that. That's amazing. Aww. Um. All right. Uh. Mr. Garrow just he ra he just raised his hands. So yeah. Might as well. Him. You know. Good. All right. You're about Get to see how the other half collapsed. I'm gonna pop the Dorkeries backstage real quick. And get JB back in here. What's up? Uh, oh, wait. There it is. No, there. Uh, see, this is going to get confusing all night. Well, maybe JB left. I don't see him back here. So it looks like we got room for everybody. Um, JB, you're in the chat. You're, you're still welcome to, to pop back on if you, if you have more to show. But Mr. Garrell, yeah. where is yours, brother? All right. So I didn't actually uh, know that much about Star Wars until, I guess, about four years ago. And my son... Uh, when he was younger, he didn't really want to. When, I've said this before. I've told the story before. He didn't really want to play. He, he was a, very much a mama's boy. And then one day he just started talking about Star Wars. And I didn't even know what he was talking about because I've never had Star Wars stuff. And so all mine is basically trying to buy his affection for 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> and so that's what all this mess is. And I will. So that's basically what all it is. It's just getting more play time with the kids before they grow up and they don't yeah. want to have anything to do with you. So I also. Uh, like I said, you're about to see how the other half live now. Um, I also try to get Java, but I, I have to go piece by piece. So I have to get this, and then, <laughs> then I have to find this, and then I have to find the rest. Um, and then I did get this. And I did unbox this. This is pretty cool. Um, and I have this other one. I guess, I guess it came with the original one a long time ago. And then, you know, the guy who, who uh, shot first, if you want to see who got it. <laughs> And then I have, you know, just a few of these other things. You know, I got to uh, go with that Java thing. And then finally, Carol, I just got to say also, your set looks fantastic for the show tonight. Woo! Yeah, these well are done. Awesome. I have like a whole bunch of those, but that was the only one that was like uh, tall enough. And then I have these like stands because this is basically what the kids do. They come in this room and they, they get the toys they want and any guns or lightsaber, they got to check them out because they're going to get lost. And then they got to bring them back to me. But then they have all these and choose and I got them all over the place. Uh, I got this to go with John, because that's kind of what I'm trying to do now, because my son was asking me about it. So I got this to go with it, and it kind of rotates. Um, yeah, so it's just toy after toy. This is uh, the only pops I own are from the Star Wars Rebels, and it's because this is the show that, like, I don't know, once a week my son would come running in here and ask me if there was a new episode, and so it was kind of near and dear to my heart that it was like, uh, a me and him thing, and it was just me and him that watched it. So these nice. are like the only the only pops I have. I I don't know. I have so much toys and and things around. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what it is for me in Star Wars. Now I'm like over the top. I have about fifty more of those books. Yeah, the so, can like the canon uh, novels and stuff. Like, yeah, I started getting books. all the canon novels, and uh, and there's just, I asked my daughter to go down and grab some, and she came up with like five and. And so that's the one she came up with, but 
The force is definitely strong with Mr. Girl. A lot of people enjoying you in the chat, brother. Um, <laughs> yep, rocking an awesome shirt for sure. Uh, Disco is plugging your channel. Good job, my friend. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Katoon's in the house. McDee's in the house. We got so many people here joining us. Thank you, guys. Um, appreciate you hanging out. Backseat driver. Um, all right, so uh, my the last guest to go, I believe, is JP, and then I'll go. So JP, <laughs> what's up, brother? I don't know. I don't know if I can follow those last two guys. Hey, you know, I'm I'm feeling similarly nervous. Um, but. So, like, I am old enough to like remember the movies and have went to the movies, and we had dad. My dad used to work at the fire department, and he, they had HBO at the fire department, so he used to take movies and stuff. So we had a old VHS of A New Hope and Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back that we watched a billion times back in the day because we had three channels and I watched those movies so many times. But I didn't have the toys as a kid. Like, I used, whatever I, I had, like, anything and everything, I would turn into X-Wings and TIE Fighters, but they weren't the real thing. <laughs> um, I didn't really have any of the toys until, like, they did the, like, special editions in the 90s and then they came out the toys then uh and i bought a bunch of those then most of those i have sold over the years i have a few left i didn't pull any of those out but i really didn't collect star wars stuff until a couple of years ago just as kind of a gag extra for my birthday my sister gave me this little dude so i was like what the heck is that so I went and investigated what the Funkos were. And like almost immediately, well, I was like, well, I got to get the rest of the Hoth like set. So I had to go find Luke and nice. snow covered Chewbacca. And of course, I had to get the Wampa. <laughs> and it was <laughs> odd. Um, I ended up, at, I think, at my height of Funkos two and a half, three years ago. I probably had close to 180-ish Star Wars Funko. No. Damn. <laughs> um, I've moved a bunch of them on. Uh, I I've, bought some that I still uh, haven't unboxed. I've so. moved a bunch of them. I've, like, most of which I have moved. Like All my prequel pops that I had, I've moved all of those. i moved all my Rogue One pops. And I really tried to just focus on characters and scenes and that kind of stuff that I like. But I probably still have 120-ish. Probably Star Wars related Funkos. Um, you know, here keep going with like the the Hoth stuff. You know, I have Princess Leia and the Hoth. JP, I don't, I don't think they stopped making Star Wars pops. Well, they haven't. They still make them. <laughs> I just like stop. Well, I stopped buying Funkos altogether for the most part <clears throat> because I've shifted so hard back to comics. Um, but yeah, you know, I have oh, like, awesome. oh, a man. bunch of the Funkos. And one of my favorites is Han on the Tauntaun. So, um, and I'm an in and out of box collector. So some of them stay in the box and some of them like this just has to be out of the box because he's just too cool. So, um, so yeah, I got a bunch of Funkos I can show. Some of which are really cool, but that's mostly what I was going to show. Um, one of my, you know, I'll show one more. Empire Strikes Back one. It's a little hard to find and track down. And, uh, wow. Oh, sweet the top guy right there. Carol likes that one. Yeah. yeah. So that is that's that, and that's a pretty tough one to track down. So um, it is. I was in the same boat as you, man. I thought I had a lot. I had like seventy eight pops, <laughs> and uh, I just went to my comic book store when I first got into comics and traded them all in, and <laughs> that's how I got my collection going. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, they funded some of the books I bought. <laughs> and, like, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Well, guys, those are all awesome first rounds of sharing from you guys. Um, it might lead me down a rabbit hole for toys and pops and things that I don't collect, uh, which is kind of scary. But, hey, it, it had to happen eventually, right? <laughs> so, um, all right. So what I'm going to show you got here, I can actually keep you guys on the screen, right? There it is. Nice. All right, so I don't have a ton of toys, okay? I'm not a big, I'm not actually a Star Wars toy or pop collector. I've got a couple, um, but it's not really a big part of my collection. But so the only toy I'm gonna show is this one because I got this at uh, Star Wars Celebration last year in Chicago. This was the uh, Lego exclusive 
Uh, there you go. Yep. 20th, um, That's a top 20 one. years. Yeah. yeah. Right. So this was a, this was a lottery exclusive. Like you actually had to win a lottery at the convention and then show up at the exact right booth at the right time and, and pick this up and then still pay for it. You didn't win it. Uh, you just had, you won the right to buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> you know, JP and I got to hang out at Star Wars Celebration, which was awesome. That was the first time we met in person and got to hang out. That so I always have uh, fond memories of that of that convention uh, for the, for that purpose as well. Um, but yeah, you guys hearing like a click or something, like some sort of noise on the back end? Yep, Any yep. idea what that is? Yeah, I don't know how to get rid of that. But anyway, sorry if that's bothering anybody. But yeah, that's that's the toy I'll show. We've got a couple other cool random things from Star Wars Celebration uh, that uh, that uh, that year including these two um, cassette tape read-along adventures for Return oh, of the Jedi. That's so cool. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> one of them is a red variant, I guess. Or, uh, <laughs> red variant. <laughs> red variant, silver variant. So, yeah, uh, obviously these are still in bag and whatnot, uh, and I probably will just leave them there for forever. But, hey, if I, if I ever get the urge to, to read along... Uh, with this cassette uh, to the story of Return of the Jedi, I have uh, two different cassette tapes. By the time you tapes. find a cassette player to play them, you'll finally want to open them. <laughs> well, I know, right? Well, I actually, well, I do have a cassette player. It's just not oh, that good. It's just not a great one. Uh, but who can, who can get a great cassette player these days, anyway? Um, it's that's pretty tough. Uh, and then I, I think some, you know, Big showed. Um, they showed uh, some of the you know, 35, the 70 millimeter film strips that um, you know that I got one, uh, one of which I gave so him, cool, one of which I gave Carol. But uh, this one's from Empire. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it's Princess Leia. It's, it's a piece of history, man. Like yeah, it's, it's part a piece of, of history. What you see it on the screen. That's awesome. Yep. And then this one's from Return of the Jedi. Uh, it's and it's a Boba Fett scene. Uh, and what makes it even cooler is it's signed by Jeremy Bullock. And he signed oh, wow. it, Jeremy Bullock, Boba <laughs> Fett. Nice. So nice. he's the actor that uh, that played Boba Fett. Uh, and then I'll do I'll do a little lightning round because it'll probably take another thirty minutes to get around back to me. So I'm gonna do a lightning round of my biggest Star Wars, I guess, Grail comic books. Oh, uh, nice. Real quick, okay? So I got this. This is uh, you know, this is first appearance yeah. of Doctor Afra. Uh, Nine eight. Five. Okay. Yep. This is the one in 25 LaRocca variant. So this is the, the rare copy uh, of the issue. Great modern Star Wars comic book canon character, uh, Dr. Aphra. So I'm happy to have that in a 9.8. Uh, then I have Star Wars 42. This is in a 9.4 white pages. Uh, and this is uh, first appearance of Boba Fett and Yoda in comics. Uh, so there's that in the CGC 9.4. Uh, and then obviously, so uh, I I upgraded my copy of Star Wars number one the last New York at, at New York Comic Con last year, uh, and then I think uh, I gave my old copy to Bake, so he might show the old copy uh, at some point. But this is the the copy I upgraded it with at that at that time nine point two. <laughs> now that's awesome. Uh, this one's going to be up for sale pretty soon. What? Uh, just heads up because I got this. What a <laughs> so this is my upgrade. Oh my uh, nine point eight white pages. How is there a nine point eight? Okay. That's well, a Bronze Age book. There, there's there's nine eighths of a lot of Bronze Age books. Yeah, there's a, there's um, a, this is my oldest personal nine eight. I would think kids, I mean, I guess not only does kids read them, but I would think kids would destroy Star Wars book, but I guess not. Well, I'm going to show you an example of that next. Uh, so this is my this is my my Star Wars one 9.8 white pages. So this is a keeper. I, I do want to get a reholder uh, from the old to the new label. Uh, thank you guys, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, definitely not facsimiles. Um, so yeah, so I will be if anybody's interested in the 9.2, let me know. Yes. But, this is the night. All right, we'll, we'll, have, a, we'll have a conversation, Tacoma. I can trade um, some toys. <laughs> well, yeah, that might actually be a good idea, trade for some toys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'm super happy to have that. But this is my holy grail of my Star Wars collection, um, the $0.35 cent wow. price variant. 
Oh, uh, wow. Oh, nice. So it is a 1.8, and there's a kid that drew in the letters. See, hey. Star Wars. Sorry. Uh, it looks cool, though. Yeah, but it is uh, it is the rarest, Sorry. most, you know, biggest Bronze Age Grail book that I can uh, think of. Uh, yeah, here, this is the Bigfoot of my uh, my collection. Yeah. I've seen uh, worse doodles on a cover, man. I mean, at least it's symmetrical lines. So, so uh, there's only two, there's only 241 copies of the 35 cent variant, and you know you could tell it's not a reprint because it's the square box here, not the tri, not the you know the other the whatever the the, wow. the other. It's it's like a. I don't even know what, what what that shape is, but it's like a it's like a sideways rectangle or something like that, Wrong uh, and uh, or square. But this is the real deal, thirty five cent price variant. There's only two hundred forty one of these on the census, and there's only one on the CBCS census. I even checked the CBCS census, which just recently launched. So there's only one. So there's only two hundred forty two known graded copies of the uh, thirty five cent so price when variant. A new uh, a new slab. We send it to CBCS, so you'll be one of the two on the on the census. No, <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, those those are like those are like my babies as far as my Star Wars comics go. I brought up I brought out a lot of other ones that aren't as like whatever like key or, or uh, you know valuable or whatever. But those are the those are the ones uh, that I am most proud of, I guess. So there you go. Beautiful. Pretty awesome. Those are Thanks. All right, who wants to go next? I'll go because I got the okay. my last little lot here. Uh, most of, I haven't really been a Star Wars collector, although I've been a fan. Uh, most of the Star Wars stuff I had before were like 78 pops, like I said, and I recently traded this in. And the other stuff I had, I gave as an A-OK -okay to, uh, to Kavi. Thank you, sir. So, you're welcome. And... What I have left is uh, basically an AOK -okay that I received from uh, Kavi. So uh, right now, this one I actually picked up on my own. This is a Star Wars 12. And uh, the rest of these here are from Kavi with the uh, AOK. -okay. And it pretty much jump started me wanting to pick up this run or at least up to maybe like 50. Yeah, I think I sent you a set, right? Uh, like a like a here's yeah. a here's a starter set to collect Star Wars, basically. What I was yeah, it, well, it's something that I wanted anyway. You know, I, I, <laughs> I knew you wanted. It. See, I love I love the way these look on these covers here. These first ones here, and this next one is actually one of my favorites. Just the colors. Uh, this one here. Oh yeah, I love that one. a lot. Yeah. With the green in the back, and then just the lights, the lasers, and the and Chewbacca, and then number two. Number two, so good. These are awesome. You know, first appearances too. <laughs> yep. And then of yeah, course, yeah, I got my uh, I got my number two signed by Howard Chaykin. There it oh, is. Oh, nice. There is that copy that I had. I think I had that for for like three years, three or four years, and then I. Uh, this was I awesome agree. because uh, I actually got one in one of the boy who had seven mystery boxes, and uh, Discovery Bay was really on the hunt for one to complete his run, so I ended up selling it to him, and uh, this was great to add that one to my collection now, so thank you very much. That was awesome. Oh, thank you, dude, awesome. man. Um, I, uh, I was happy to pass along my undercopy. Like, I don't want it. That, like 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 I said like since I just upgraded the nine two I'm a, uh, to a nine eight I'm gonna I'm gonna pass that along to the community hopefully I can work out a deal with Tacoma for for some toys because that sounds like right up that sounds pretty much perfect right now because yeah. uh, that's where I'm lacking as far as Star Wars like I have a lot of comic books um, and I have you know a, a decent amount of like random things like movie memorabilia and things like that not not stuff that's actually used. But you know, little little trinkets and stuff. But I don't have a ton of toys, uh, so like I would love to that. get started. Uh, he said he just got that Star Wars book back. I know. I was I was there when he was doing the unboxing in his chat. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, nice. Nice. So awesome. Thanks, Bake. Um, who wants to go next? Dorkeries? Yeah, we'll go. You guys up? All right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm gonna let her do hers in a second, but I was gonna show one more. 
This is a look. This is a. Uh, Whoa! Nice. Sweet. So, I'm not. I'm not much of a tattoo guy. Those are actually my first tattoos, but. That's you know, awesome, dude. You're I considered. I considered getting one at Celebration because they have that whole tattoo setup live on the convention floor. People are getting Star Wars tattoos like all the whole convention. I was. I was tempted, but I walked away. From it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> So, so, so obviously today is a big day for also Clone Wars. Um, you know, yeah. especially again we won't spoil. But uh, Ashley Exxon, we have met her so many Several times. times. Awesome. Uh, actually, Sometimes not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we were at Comic Con, uh, San Diego Comic Con, a couple of years ago, and we it was actually the day she had her panel where she found out that. Clone Wars was coming back for the first time. For the last season. Um, That's right. And, that surprise at the end of the panel at SCC. Yeah, that, that yeah. look where, and she started bawling her eyes out. We ran into her in the hotel and we had a, it was just us because there was no one else around. We had a really nice conversation with her and I asked her, I said, hey, you know, was, was that like, was that really totally surprised? And she said she had no clue whatsoever. Uh, that that was going to happen. And she said everything within that reaction that you saw in the pictures or at the panel, that was all legit. Wow. Uh, she's just one of the nicest people nice. you'll ever meet uh, in your life. So show, show, show your Ashley. Is that what you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I, did, I did put these on a second ago. Um, I'll just go ahead and put them on and I'll show them more in detail. But these are um, Princess Leia ears, but they're made by her universe and uh, Ashley x -Tine. So what is cool these are like cute and okay. I'm glad Drew bought them for me. But what's really cool is the box that they come in and the fact that they're autographed. Oh, yeah. I recognize oh, that yeah. signature. Yep. So that's pretty awesome. She signed her name and Ahsoka's name. Yep. And it says limited release on the back. Um, but, yeah. So my favorite thing, um, like Drew said, we've been Star Wars fans for really long time uh that's why when he was like we could be part of the show tonight i was like let's do it <laughs> Star Wars is i'm glad you guys movie. asked me to come on it's and so I, cool i love everything else but i love star wars and i have loved star wars since as long as i can remember um but i say that to say we have star wars in just about every room in our house and these <laughs> this is on display in my bedroom um but this is the other thing that i think is really cute about these ears is and it says hope on the inside. Whoa. Like the I think that's really cool. It's got the rebel Obviously, symbol and everything. When I wear them, I'm the only one that knows that. But <laughs> That's um, really cool. But I think it makes it super special. Um, I have some comics. Do you want to see if you Yeah, let's see some comics. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about this a lot today. I've been dorking out on Star Wars all day. Um, I did the entire last season of Clone Wars today. Wow. <laughs> um, and, then wow. I, and then I went through some of my comics and read them. Um, but I was really thinking about Star Wars. And I think one of the reasons uh, people like us, and I know I'm, I'm speaking for myself, really get into Star Wars is because what makes geeking out and dorking out about stuff uh, the most fun is when you can just keep digging. I mean, when you can just keep going and going and going, the fun never ends. That's why Star Wars is so amazing. Whether the movies are like perfect or they're not perfect, you always have something new to dig into. Right. You can yeah. do the toys, you can do the Legos, you can do books, you can do comic books. Um, and now you can even go uh, to Star Wars lands. <laughs> like in that yeah, movie. I mean, and I, and I love that about the like brand or IP or whatever you want to call it, but like yeah. call it how it exists in so many different well, mediums. And you yourself you can, can kind of, yeah, and you, you yourself, you never have to stop. Yeah, depending upon how crazy you want to get, you can create your own menu of what yeah. you choose to, 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 to digest, I guess, basically. Which is what but, makes it so great. That's why uh, that Star Wars Age comics are I love those. Some of the coolest things. Um, and I have lots of Star Wars comics, but I love the fact that you can do the Age comics and you can do the Age of Republic and the Age of yep. uh, Rebellion and the Age of Resistance. And you can like really dig into like individual characters. So I brought one from each age. I brought cool. the Age of Republic special, and this one's really cool. So the specials have like little backstories of three different characters. I don't know if anybody has read these, but like, so you get like some backstory of Ventress in this one. That's super cool. 
Uh, and then I don't have the special from the Age of Rebellion, so I brought this one, which Arcan. is super cool. Because it like characters that you like, we know all about Han, we know all about Leia, but like characters you don't really know like where they grew up. Yeah. So like this comic like shows like a piece of his childhood in it, like things that you didn't know. Another thing that I found out reading it is that as soon as they they blew up Alderaan on the Death Star. He shot and killed all the gunners who blew up. <laughs> he was like, blow up Alderaan, and then he had them all shot. Well, just give, I don't know. I just. And have but, witnesses. And then um, mm -hmm. this is from the Age of Resistance, and this gives a little backstory of the three of them, which if I, I know some people don't like the new movies, but if you like watching uh, Ma's always hitting on Chewie. There's like a lot of extra scenes. At one point, her and Chewie get in a gunfight, and she climbs on Chewie's shoulders, and they're like both have guns out, and they're spinning in circles to shoot people in that comic book. Which uh, that's awesome, like yeah. a rocket and Groot type of thing. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. it actually like in the movies, like it kind of she flirts with him a lot, but there's some uh, insinuation there that it might be a little bit more than flirting between <laughs> her and Chewie. <laughs> But, so That's awesome. I like the comics, and I like I like Star Wars because I never have to quit. So I I'm totally I'm totally with you, and I, I know it's not my turn, but I'm gonna show you a, like a few you know a few of those one shots that I've done that I've signed. Yeah, show them. So yeah, so uh, Jody Hauser signed this uh, oh God, Darth Maul for me. Uh, Greg Pak signed this um, um, Princess Leia one for me. I love and that. then uh, Greg Pak signed this one for me, and this was an AOK um, from Kenny, Comic at 84. So it says to Kabi, King of New York. I Greg Pak. So, uh, so that was have, a quick. Have you, ever, have you ever, obviously not the ones that are autographed, but have you ever read any of them? Yeah, I read all of them. I read, I read every awesome. single age of. I read. So I'm a big reader of the modern yeah. comics uh, with Star Wars. I have a whole short box with just the modern like runs and whatnot in it which awesome. is, is running out of room and i've been squeezing the life out of it like i'm like going i'm like 50 comics beyond like the recommended comics <laughs> in a bc in a bcw plastic short bin so i'm it's a little bit hairy like i should probably separate them uh, you know out more evenly or whatever but you know how it is trying to find space for all this stuff um all right so uh Mr. Garell has a Kylo Ren hat uh, at the tip of his spear right there. So that I'm going to so go to him. <laughs> That's it's a awesome. Voice changer, actually, I don't know if it has batteries in it, but uh, it actually changes your voice. to Changes sound. your voice? That's yeah. awesome, dude. I don't know if it's... Nah, it needs batteries, I guess. Oh, yeah. See? Oh. So it, it <laughs> the, sun, the sun likes that. <laughs> I got to put it over here now because it's loud. All right. Yeah. I so, mean, I want that old Ben Kenobi uh, that, that's right up front so bad. Yeah, I'm not so that for the old crying feature. I've been looking at that the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's where I was going with this. Okay. So uh, I like Star Wars, but mine really took off um, for the cartoon, the Clone mm -hmm. Wars cartoon. Yeah. That's like one of the greatest things ever made in uh, human existence. I love it, dude. Yeah. Uh, so Kenobi, because of the cartoon, is my favorite character um, in the cartoon. But then when you think, when I started thinking about that, because I was thinking about Ahsoka, I was thinking about Cad Bane and and Ventress and man, freaking, um, I, there's just so many of them that are amazing. But I will show this as well because this is what I got. Oh yeah, there's the other one. There's the missing piece. As far yeah. as the movies go, there's no no one finer than this gentleman here. <laughs> this funny. guy is amazing. The only Star Wars guy I have at work is, is him. I have a little toy of him at work, and uh, NYC got me this, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm glad you like it, dude. Speechless because of that. I have. I don't want to show it because it's kind of embarrassing, but there's a closet right over to my right, and inside of it, the all the walls of the closet are lined with uh, Star Wars comics. It's almost like a weird, creepy shrine, I guess. And I didn't think <laughs> about when I was doing it. I just wanted to display them somewhere. And then my sister walked in one day and was like, is that some kind of shrine? So it does kind of look <laughs> creepy and shrine-ish. So I have books behind me, but they're all kind of up. This is uh, not a 9.8. This is a reprint, like 2.5, you know. <laughs> but this it's one still is still the book. I wasn't planning on taking it down, but she was showing that. Oh, here we go. Just oh, the way that oh, the white wow. paper, you know, is off his face and everything. That is you know who did that cover? That was an awesome cover. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Um, so so I do have a few of these that I pulled down. Obviously, this is the the Alex Ross. Uh, Alex Ross. I got that in my in my stack here. That's a great one. that's a great book. And then I also got this one. I think it was like uh, your neck of the woods, Midtown, and they had it for like a dollar when I bought the other one. They just nice. kind of it in. So that's a really cool one. So that's just two of the uh, <clears throat> the comic books I was going to show. Yeah, and I was just going to say, yeah, if you haven't ever watched the uh, Clone Wars cartoon, it's it's ridiculous. It's really, 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 really over the top good. And Agreed. That's, that's what made me uh, the Star Wars fan that I am because it, it, it went to a whole nother level. Like I was watching it and they were fun and I was playing with the kids. But when I started watching that, I mean, that's a lot of episodes. And I think I pretty much watched them nonstop over like a three day period and just watched it all the way through. <laughs> um nice. I mean, Darth, Darth Maul is amazing in it. That's really um, yeah, it's a, it's very rewatchable too. So yeah. uh, enjoy I mean, rewatching it. So. Yeah, Count Dooku is ridiculous in it. Like he's awesome. It's just, and then so that also is really cool because a lot of the book, which I don't know if I have any here, uh, they have a uh, oh, what's that guy's name? There's that Jedi that has that yellow uh, streak across his nose. I can't think of his name right now. But there's a book with him and Ventress where. Oh, where uh, they're teaming up to uh, try to assassinate Count Dooku, and it's yeah. just an awesome book. And there's all kinds of ties in that just this this fabric of they weave in, they give you a little bit here and a little bit there, and it just makes everybody, you know, show them all and how awesome they are and everything. So that's yeah. my that's my top Star Wars is is a funny it's funny enough as a cartoon. <laughs> I like yeah. Rebels a lot, man. I like Rebels a lot too. Oh. Rebels gets. Rebel kind of gets crapped on, but like I mean, yeah, I have a connection because it was me and my son's show, but I really like that show. It was like I, I, I actually it. like it a little bit more than Clone Wars. That's but, definitely yeah. blasphemous. The third and fourth but, season of Rebels got really, really good. Yeah. I like I, I like the content in Rebels a lot, but the animation style of Clone Wars I prefer over the animation style of of yeah. Rebels, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but they're both awesome. I mean, both, it's, I've it's seen both shows. I, I've rewatched both shows front to back. Already, so. Um, I just started or, this afternoon on about five episodes. Yeah, you're, you're gonna enjoy I it. I love the journey of Ezra. I love the. the yeah, movie. absolutely. Kanan's yeah. a great character too. Together. I love getting to see where the droids end up since I'm only like five episodes yeah. in. Like, that's uh -huh. And then in um, the I Chopper, think it's, yeah, Chopper's great show. There's also a, a Rebels book that I read, and it's got a lot, a lot of Kanan in it, and what he is, Caleb, I guess, is the original Caleb Dune or something, but yeah. uh. In that, it's a really a moment, and, I, and I'm not gonna say I cry, but it's one of those moments you have a Star Wars where kind of you're not expecting it to come. Mm -hmm. And it was him as a as a little Padawan, like little bitty, and they were in this room, and Obi Wan Kenobi was with him, and he said, "What did they do?" And he said it, and in that thing, he said, uh, "It's like, oh, so we can talk to all the Jedi's." And he said, "Could you warn somebody if you needed?" And they were like trying to shush him. Obi Wan Kenobi said, "No, don't shush him. You know, that's a great question he's have. Yeah, I guess you could if you needed to warn everybody once you could." And then they fast forward. To Obi Wan Kenobi saying, you know, basically it's a trap. Don't come back. And it was all because it all went back to him when he was a little boy asking Kenobi, "Could you send out a distress call if you needed to?" And it had never crossed their mind until he asked that when he was a kid. That's oh. cool. Well, I was going to say this thing that you were asking about. Mm -hmm. So when I first started collecting comics, this random guy on eBay, he was he'd always sell these giant lots for a dollar, and that's why I have all this crap all over the place. <laughs> so he contacted me randomly. It's been like a year since I bought anything from him. I don't think he's been on eBay. And he contacted me and said, hey, do you happen to be a Star Wars fan? And I immediately was like, oh, God, my, my wallet is hurting because I don't have any money. But he said, I have all of these. There were a bunch. But this is the only one I really wanted. And it's like soft goods. And it's pretty awesome. It's really well made. But um, he said, I bought these things for like 40 bucks. But I have them on, I have them on eBay for 99 cents. They're only like an hour left. And nobody's bid on them. So I like rushed over there and bit on this one. I should have been all over them, I guess, but you gotta, you gotta control yourself. <laughs> so yeah, well, that, that's, a, that's a nice grab, dude. Yeah, <laughs> we all know that for sure. Nice grab. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Tacoma here. Um, there he is. All right, I got I got another couple of rounds here, so I'll try to be judicious. Uh, Figuring Dan, and the modal <laughs> note from the Cantina uh, band. Very cool. Uh, if you check out my IG, there's a nice shelf here of all the Lego Star Wars Bionicles. I, I don't want to take them down because I'll break them. Um, but Figure and Dan is on that shelf along with this Greedo. Uh, That's cool. Figure. This came out in 1997. I found it at a shop that was closing when I first moved uh, to Tacoma. So I just kind of dug that one. Um, What's up, Gomez? I have 
I have a uh, a collection of I all pretty much most that of always Pez dispensers, but I only uh, picked a few. That is Soka, and then I still think this is like a three thousand billion dollar one because R two is missing a leg and it's still in the package. It's a factory defect. Everybody else tells me it's worth five dollars, but I still think this is like the million dollar <laughs> rail that nobody even knows there's a factory era version of the R2 Pez dispenser. So I'm never I'm never parting with that. Um let's see. Yoda on the lunchbox. Um I want to want to get the originals, but I don't know that I want to pay forty dollars for That's like a full on lunch pail right there. Box. The black uh Black Series of Soka, the Walmart near me was going out of business, or the Kmart, and these were like five bucks each, so I grabbed that. Um, cool. This is the 1997. Yes, I have those. VHS. No, nothing changed, nothing added. This is this is just the cleaner um, version of VHS. So this is still. That's awesome because you can't yeah. find anything that's not. That's way better than that Pez. You know. Somebody shoot before he does. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, jokes aside, I'll, I'll uh, the bounty hunters in the Lego. I always dug that. Later, JB. Thanks for popping in. And then recently, my son and I were in Target. They came out with the uh, Mandalorian Lego set. So of course, I buy these sets and throw them away and just keep the mini figs. But that's crazy. <laughs> and got three. Go ahead. I got three books to finish this round off. The, the Star Wars cookbook. Uh, which my wife got me for my birthday. And I haven't made a lot in here, but I made, they've got these little uh, banana um, R2-D2s that are really, really uh, cool. You can <laughs> serve on like a summer day. Do they have a recipe yeah. for blue milk? They got, don't have a recipe too. for blue milk, but they got like Princess Leia Danishes, Twin Sun Toast, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's kind of most icely morsels trying to find the one that I did make. It's like putting two Kit Kats on the side of a piece of banana and it looks like an R2-D2. Um, and I'll find it, of course, in a second. Nothing like being unprepared. Pawn Burgers, Boba Fettuccine. Um, <laughs> oh my God, this is like gonna be the last page or I missed it. Wookie Cookies, I did make. Bosque Brownies. Um, yeah, it actually is the last page. Okay, so R2-D2 treats. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, my two favorite Star Wars books are this pop-up book from 1977. Ooh. Oh, yeah, pop-up oh, books. Wow. Nice. Well, a lot of the pop-ups don't work as well as they should. Like this. Oh, there you go. Oh, now it's not working, of course. But this R2 pops up. Um, this one's broken on this page. I love this sand crawler. And then remember when R2 got like taken up by the Jawas and of course it's not working now. <laughs> I'm going to rip it, but he does, he does fly up there. There he goes. <laughs> oh, I'm bringing That's the same one. Oh, bring it, bring it. <laughs> Soldier, the new, the, the latest Star Wars game is amazing. I, I, I played it for like it 40 goes, hours. It on like that and it ends with like the classic scene down the trench. Oh yeah. Star. Just this oh, really, really, really cool. Like so big book. And then I also have this Star Wars sketchbook came out in 78. This is a lot of the original sketches by one of the artists that worked with uh with it was Lucasfilm back then with Fox. And it just, you know, some of these were were put in the movie and some of them weren't. But uh these are really cool. They've got one for Jedi, one for Empire, one for Star Wars, and you can find them for like 20 bucks each online or at like used bookstores. Um I love these uh sand crawlers. Damn. Really cool. Yeah. All right. So that's good for me for this round. Those Macquarie sketches, dude, are so cool, man. Like, yeah. like it, at uh, at Celebration, there was this one booth that actually had originals. Like, I was looking at Macquarie sketches and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they and, were awesome. And, you know, I, I walked away, but I was so tempted. It was, like, it was, it was unreal. Uh, but, yeah, that's, the sketchbooks are incredible. I don't know if you guys have been on. If you've been on, I'm sure a lot of us have been on Disney Plus today. In the scroll for their for May the for their May the Fourth be with you. Yeah. They're using all like production design artwork and stuff like that from the different movies instead of like the the you know the the marketing images. They're using these other like more, well you know lesser known images whatnot. Right. So it's really cool to see those. 
Um, yeah, what's up, Raul in the house? <laughs> this is the whole Senate. <laughs> it is the whole Senate. Um, all right, so I think JP's up next. Yeah, I'm next. Right. Um, so since Tacoma was doing some books, like when they first, like George first opened up the universe to so the expanded universe and they started making the books, um, I devoured a ton of those books. And I still have uh, my original copies. I never got the hard nice. cover to get to later of the, the Empire. Which you can see, I've read. A, I must say, you read the dog out of that book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I still have that. I need to get a first. It's like you ran it over with a truck. Too. Yeah, no, I need yeah. to get a first edition at some point to replace because these are both first editions. Um, awesome. And so I wanted to show those. So when they made a pop, even though it was a Rebels pop, and they've changed him a little bit, I had to get That's the Grand cool. Admiral Thrawn. Um, I want that. <laughs> and then we've, that was awesome. We've been talking about them today. We've been talking about the fact that the final episode of Clone Wars dropped today. So three other. I stopped kind of collecting pops before they started making the Clone Wars pops, but I do have the Rebels versions of three of the characters that have been main storyline here lately. Um, awesome. Rebels Darth Maul. Nice. And then the Rebels Captain Rex. That's really cool. And then, of course, the Rebels Ahsoka. Oh, oh man. Nice. 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 I have all of those. Um, not, we've been talking about Star Wars Celebration. I'll show a couple of those. Like, So I failed. I did not win the lottery for the Funko booth at Star Wars Celebration, but my sister did. So she did let me snag a couple of the pops. She kept the rest, but she got all of them. So I do have the blue chrome Leia. Sweet, and the um, uh, stormtrooper from Star Wars Celebration when we went, um, and then the other thing we did a lot of, which I've collected on and off through the years, uh, is pins, and we did a lot, a ton of pins, not as many as I should have <laughs> at Celebration, um, like just people were going after those pins. Yeah, those like, pins were like in high demand. I really regret right. not like starting on the pins sooner. Uh, I'll be honest, but yeah, a bunch of the, the pins. It's pretty cool all by itself. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, that was yeah, that was the yeah. lanyard we got at celebration. The light and dark side awesome. lanyard, um, and then of course we went. I went two days. Cabby went the whole time. Like uh, one of our the Friday pass with Kylo, and then. Sunday pass was the Mandalorian, and we were both in the Mandalorian panel. Uh, we were. That was awesome. And that was a that was a blast. Um, yeah, I remember like texting you guys because you were live streaming, and I'm like, "Turn it back on. What's going on?" Yeah, <laughs> we were we were the only people to see that footage for like half a day. I guess. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they said that they made you shut off your phones or whatever. Yep, they did make us shut off phones. Yeah, and then you know I got a lot of stuff, a lot of the pops and stuff I used to get from the old uh, smugglers, smugglers bounty box that when Funko first started making those, I kind of stopped getting those later. But they also came with a bunch of patches. Nice. Um, yeah, I remember those boxes. They were great cool. in the beginning. Yeah, and so I got a I got a ton of these patches, and then they also came with pins. Um, like. See, all that was great for me because I was part of the Bambox community too, so I could trade yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's most of what I got. I'm probably I'm gonna have to run, but um, no worries, dude. That's everything I was gonna show. So awesome, JP. Thanks, man. thanks for sharing, dude. That's yeah, I'll be a lot of good stuff. So, Very cool. So thanks, guys. It was awesome. I love seeing your stuff. I'm gonna keep watching. <laughs> so, awesome. <I> <laughs> And you guys are getting me fired up. Like I want to start a YouTube channel or something. Woo! Just, just for this, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go real quick. I'm gonna show as much as I can in this this round. Uh, Bake was talking about some stuff that he a okayed uh, to me and stuff that I okay a okayed to him. So I wanted to show some of that stuff. Um, so just like Chewy, I got a medal, uh, and I could put it oh, on. Oh, that's so cool. So yep. So uh, this is from uh, this is from Star Wars Celebration Orlando uh, in I think that was 2017, but definitely uh, legit awesome uh, wearable Star Wars medal. So thanks, Bake. Uh, You're welcome. That's yeah. Amazing. Uh, and I, this is usually kind of like uh, hanging over there on my uh, 
shelf sort of in it's hard it may be hard to see from like all day what yeah i know i should probably just wear it all well I, i'm stuck inside all day now so but um but another cool thing that he hooked me up with um was these han dice oh which that's was, awesome. i love which i just love man um if i ever get a car again because obviously i live in new york but if, if i ever you know things are you know things are evolving I, I may end up at a place where i need a car again down down the road uh this this is definitely going to be hung on the uh you know the rear view uh, that's so, a limo driver does it put him on his rear view mirror what, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the limo driver to put. Oh, that's the head. limo driver. Uh, yeah. I see. I see what you did there. Um, two pins here. I'm going to show from. This is this one's like the standard one from Star Wars Celebration, and then this one was the Ray pin from uh, Star Wars Celebration. So two uh, Star Wars Celebration related pins, um, and then this is just a funny. This is just a you know, whatever like a super cheap like you know button with a Star Wars related. Uh, saying may the force be with you on there so that's something pretty simple that I'll, that I'll put on my shirt or whatever occasionally uh and then for the rest of this round i'm gonna do a quick fire of the star wars related art in my collection so so um mostly comic book uh like blank comic book sketch covers but i also have one uh star wars painting so this one's uh, this one was done by Ryan Kincaid, the blank cover to Star Wars Shattered Empire number one. Uh, that's Shara Bay from that storyline. She was introduced in that storyline. So this was during like the prequel or like the lead up to The Force Awakens. Um, so there you go. That's a Ryan Kincaid. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this one, this is on a Star Wars number one blank. It's a uh, it's Anakin with a saber. This one was done by an artist called uh, Chadwick Haberland. Very, very realistic likeness of uh, Anakin right there. That's a drawing? That's a drawing. This is a sketch oh, cover. This is a nice sketch cover. Geez. Wow, okay. So good. So Chadwick, Chadwick, the artist's name is Chadwick Haberland. Uh, this one I posted to my Instagram yesterday. This was done at New York Comic Con yeah, uh, 2019 by uh, Andrea Bricardo and Babs Nazaro did the colors. And it, it's, a, it's a wraparound cover, so you can oh, see... Wow. It, it opens up fully uh, and shows to the back. So I love that one. It's That's a badass cool. Vader. Uh, this is another Vader. You can see a sense of theme and some of the sketch covers I get. This one was done by an artist named Stephanie Isidro. And you have you have Revenge of the Sith Anakin, and then you have Return of the Jedi Anakin nice. with the uh, the you know Vader masked off uh, at the end so of that good. movie. There, all on one cover to uh, Star Wars number one blank and. Uh, Rated by CBCS 9.8. Um, that Ashley Eckstein signature that the Dorkeries were showing earlier looked recognizable to me because of this book. Yeah. Uh, wow. As you can see, she book. signed it right there. Ashley Eckstein of Ahsoka really cool. Tano. That's so uh, awesome. That she just totally embraces the Ahsoka thing. Like that's totally awesome. Totally right. Um, but I love this Ahsoka Ahsoka sketch. Um, yeah. So, uh, so this was uh, this was done by. Um, uh, by Scott, by an artist named uh, Scott Blair, but then signed separately at a different con by uh, Ashley Eckstein. So I love that one. That's probably my second favorite Star Wars um, sketch cover. And this is my favorite. So this one was sketched by Brian Kong Couldn't at worry. one convention and then signed by Mark Hamill at New York Comic Con 2017. Whoa. So, oh, yeah. right. Yes, Mark Hamill's signature on that. Uh, there you go. That's awesome. Dropping the fire. So yeah, so that's probably my 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 top um, sketch cover art related item. Uh, and then this is like this is one of the crown jewels of my collection. It's kind of hard to um, <laughs> hard to get. I've shown it on um, I've shown it on my original art hour program, but this is a uh, oh, original. Yeah, this thing bothers me. That's so good. Yeah, <laughs> this, is an original, that. this is an original painting of Darth Maul from uh, Gabriel Del Otto. Wow. Oh. That's just that's that's bothering me. Wow. It didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it bothering really me. So, yeah. So, like, the detail on this is just, it's just incredible. This is one of my favorite things that I own. Probably, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Yeah. My best good friend. Write the, the theme song. I've been watching The Last Dance, you know, Be Like Mike. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's that's one of my absolute favorites. So. He's only got one best friend, and that's this guy. That's why he's that's right. <laughs> it's Mr. Mr. Uh, thanks, guys. Mr. Appreciate Pepper. that. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, who wants to volunteer to go next? I'm just here for support at this point. I'm done. All right. So, so. Baker, if you're just hanging out, you're more than welcome to drop. Or if you want to hang out, you can go. You can hang Whatever out. Whatever you want, man. I'm going to give these guys some more time to show some stuff if they want. I I, I got more when when it's my turn. Do it, Tacoma. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go for it. Do it. All right. Done, done, done. I saw you about to pull that out earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So ah. the only thing about this is it's the coolest, most impractical thing in the world because as soon as you open it, 50% of your characters are upside down. And there's just no way <laughs> of not having them just all fall out. <laughs> so I'm just going to lay this down and kind of do some lightning rounds and show you what I got. And, Kavi, if anything sticks out, you're like, I want that um, for the trade. Let me know, and I'll put it aside. But first of all, well, the uh, the way to tell the original mm -hmm. action figures is the holes are hexagonal on the bottom of their feet. Um, now they can obviously reproduce that, but um, you know if you reproduce that, it's going to cost you extra. So most knockoffs don't have hexagonal, or most of the later ones don't. And on the back of the leg, I don't know if it'll show up there, but on the back of their legs, it usually says the year that they were produced. So if you're looking for originals and you think you might be coming across a counterfeit, um, that's that's one way to tell. All right, so. I collect these on the cheap. I don't have my originals, and I'm not spending big money for a mint in box or like appropriate capes and and you know guns and stuff. So there's a stormtrooper, there's Dengar, we've got Rebel pilot Luke, we've got Bosk, who's one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Skiff Captain, I think, unless he has a name, I think he was labeled Skiff Captain when we called him. Uh, this guy's name is Darth Vader. Uh, this is Obi Wan Kenobi, the man. Inaccurate color lightsaber, I believe. I don't think his was blue. Um, this is uh, one of the guys that apparently got shot by Grand Moff Tarkin after blowing up. <laughs> um, can't even get this one out. Yeah, this is a really impractically made thing. Here's a Lando Calrissian. This is one of my originals. I think five of my characters oh my somehow God. survived. Um, from my mom, Purge, when I went to college. ATAT -AT driver. Your moms run lives. Yeah. Greedo. Snaggletooth. Not not the uh, the funny colored one that's worth hundreds. Uh, Hammerhead. This is the droid that like was rude to C-3PO on the sand crawler. Um, what's this guy's name? Doc. It's a speed bird. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Tuscan Raider. I always like calling him nice. Tuscan Raider because uh, sand sand people sound so <laughs> discriminatory. <laughs> uh, we've got an Empire Han and a Star Wars Han. Uh, don't freeze me! Um, oh gosh, yeah, custom troopers. Don't go down there. Uh, an Ugnot. Nice. Is that no, Ugnot? No, that's the guy from um, Cloud City. Sorry. Are they Ugnots? Well, they are Ugnots. Yeah, yeah, they're Ugnots. They're Ugnots. This is the guy. Um, the the guy Mandalorian, too, right? Yep. Nick I Nolte. Can right, you help me out here? Uh, man. Yeah. I couldn't tell you on that. That's Zuckus. That's Zuckus. 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 There you go. There you go. It looks like a double. Did I just... Oh, no. This is another skiff guard. Um, but I think it's different than the one I just showed. That's Weequay. Weequay. There you go. Is that another Gengar? Apparently, I've got right. I didn't realize. Yeah. Because there's a Darth Vader double without a cape. You guys are, like, on another level. I actually like have one of those figures. Figures. He's on it's, my it's crazy. board. <laughs> well, I have hundreds of more. I'm embarrassed to show them all. I have a handless Darth Vader. And he's on the dashboard of my truck. Just got a few more. <laughs> here. One of the guys who like looked at the computer and made a lot of decisions for where the rebels should fly. That guy's key right there. He's key.
You know his favorite the trade. Crap. There you go. And there was a petition to make him the oh, that's mascot awesome. of the Mississippi Rebels or whatever they are, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. IG-11? You IG. Um, I think, yeah, you have to shake it to make sure you didn't miss anything. So those are those are my figures. Um, I love them, even though they're in crap condition and they're not like a new in box. They don't have stuff because that's what I spent my time. I mean, I don't know if we got people over 40 in the chat or uh, on the panel. But going through the Sears catalog and circling every Star Wars thing you you wanted your mom to buy you every Christmas, that was me in the early oh, yeah. man. Same here, man. I'm almost 40. And, yeah, the Sears catalog, being down here on this island, we didn't have a lot. There was no internet or nothing. So you kind of got that. Or the JC Pennies. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yo, what's up, Comics for Thomas, Gorilla Todd? Uh... JP says it's a trap. It is a, all of this is definitely a big trap, but we love it. Um, all right, uh, Mr. Gurrell, you want to go? Yeah, well, I can keep going like 19 rounds. Oh, wait, did we skip the door grease? <laughs> yeah, they go before me. All right, let's go yeah. to the door grease. Oh, really? Yeah, so yeah. I, I think we've probably got another round. So, my son and I, when he was little, we played with the Galactic Heroes. Good, but... I have a bunch of those too, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Got we got tons of those, uh, probably pretty much all of them. Uh, that's that's what we just we always play with that and superhero squad. I don't know if y'all remember those. So those were... Let me show what I made before you get to your toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be sure done. Me. I didn't bring a lot in. I, you made I, something? I did. I made something during quarantine, and this is what is currently above my fireplace in my living room. If she can oh, nice. And I'll have to I'll have to go to the back of the room to show you. <laughs> <laughs> can you Whoa. see that? That's awesome. That's awesome. This is what I'm currently hanging above my fireplace. <laughs> oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. So that was fun to make, but you can go now, Drew. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you got permission. So, good. Uh, I just, uh, two days, we were at Disney World, uh, two or three days before. Two uh, days. Everything shut down yeah. and, and mm -hmm. Disney World shut down. And they, they they found this in the back for me, but it's the, uh, the Mando. Um, nice vintage collection. Yeah, I couldn't find that thing anywhere. You can't find it. No, uh -uh, no, no. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough. That you know, of course, he can find the black series, uh, but that one's a little bit tougher to find. And that one actually came from from the Disney parks. They went in, in the back and, and got found one for me. So I had a bag on that. Uh, you probably saw in our, our if you if you watch our channel any we had a Star Wars video and I just upgraded to Kavi. My I did watch that video. Yeah. <laughs> So I had a 9.2, and I didn't like it, so I got rid of it. Uh, and I'm hoping this this goes uh, higher than 9.2. But there's uh, there's my one. It's it's pretty sharp. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send it off to Erod to nice. press just to see if I can get it up just a little bit. But I mean, fingers crossed, bud. I hope it's a 9.8, bro. It's a 9 <laughs> Beautiful man. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, or, or, I, it, I, yo, a 9.6 even is an awesome grade for that book. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm not picky. Um, and I actually, I sent this off. Uh, I've got another one. Um, this nice. is, I'm, I'm jealous of your variant. The A uh, cover, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got another one um, at, at uh, CGC right now that I'm, I'd be shocked if it wasn't a 9.8. Uh, so I'll be getting rid of this one uh, when, when that one comes back at, at a 9.8. But uh, I love Grenoff. Uh, I've met him a couple of times as well at San Diego Comic Con. And uh, he's just, he's one he's of my great. Favorite, favorite artists. So. Uh, last thing I want to show, you can still get this. This is actually what I think to be one of the best pops, Star Wars pops, that they've ever come out with. And uh -huh. you can actually still order this. It's the Carbonite. Oh, yes. Yes. Holy crap. I don't want pops. Don't show that. I know. I'm like I'm like sitting here saying I don't collect pops. I don't collect pops. But I want JP's cool. pops. And I love that. Monday, yeah. so that is I freaking awesome. I do cabinet work, and I got out doing work in a condo, and I get out the elevator, make the left, and the guy had a life-size Han Solo and car outside his front door. Oh, wow. It was what? like one out of a thousand something pieces and it was just to detail the whole nine just it was he put it in the hallway as like his decoration it was right outside his front door I'm like wow this is the coolest thing ever <laughs> wow dude that's yeah. crazy so it's like even some of the stuff that like that uh that 
uh, Thrawn that JP was showing. That's like a hundred dollar pop now. Uh, the Captain Red yeah. from Clone Wars. It's like one fifty. I mean, some of those Oof. are just, they're, they're way up there. Uh, yeah, I had a, a blue snaggle tooth at one point, and apparently that went up to $100. Yeah. What's up, Chase Salsa? Damn. Yeah, I don't, I know very little about the market for these pops, and even for the figures and everything. I, I'm, I, I don't, I haven't followed it that closely, but I am curious. Um, I feel about like most Star Wars ones are cheap, except for there's like a few, like a dozen that are ridiculously expensive. That are like, yeah. The yeah, original prints, like I think yeah. the originals that first came out, yeah. they're like actual. Oh, like like pops. round one pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That makes sense. All right, uh, Mr. Garrell, you're, yeah. you're 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 on the clock, brother. I want right, to see more. Stall I want to see, and show us the see more Star Wars stuff. So I'm gonna do a, this a few random things. I was when I was getting all these toys, some of these fell out. There's this is one that's like a, a game. And it gives all the stats, all all of, all of them. That back when this thing first came out, so you also got like a card game. And then like a I'll, Magic the Gathering style game, but Star uh, yeah, Wars I guess, universe. I, I don't have enough to know how to play it, but they all had yeah. stats. Um, Obi Wan Kenobi was dreadfully understated, but that's fine. That sounds and cool. These are pretty cool too. You're, they're stands, but they also, uh, I guess, they um, talk. If you had all this, oh, I remember those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a bunch. Nice. Got rid of them. a bunch of those. And then, oh, I was going to show this. Just a bunch of this random stuff. He was showing this earlier. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you still have that. batteries. Nice. I love those sound effects. And then um, it also he 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 puts like a flash on the wall, and it's her saying, "Oh, we want Kenobi. You're my only hope." Like he does all that stuff. I also have every one of these. This is actually a really good game. It's Disney Infinity. We have all of these. I was just going to show you all the random Star Wars. This hole you can fall down if you're a fan of this. Yeah, even franchise. if you don't play it's the awesome. game, they look awesome. Yeah, and the game is actually really fun. My son still plays them, I and mean, they don't support it anymore. And I meant to show this earlier. I got, I just got this as an AOK. -okay. This is pretty awesome. Oh, cool, 3D, man. Love that. Oh, nice. And then for the, some of the art I was going to show, because I was going to do it just a quick, you know, I mean, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you what all the different stuff I have. But this was done by Tank Collects. He drew this for me. Nice. And it's I remember cool. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then my mom, she had this made by an artist. And it's just a bunch of, it's like a million dots. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. wow. And that's really awesome. That's, that's nice. great. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to show just a few of those little, you know, crazy. I mean, I have, geez, stuff from, I don't know, keychains to, it, it goes, because the, the only problem with having something like Star Wars, as you guys probably know, with having like comic book stuff too, is that when your family knows you have, you have, <laughs> you start getting all kinds of chachi stuff. And then, <laughs> One of the things I really like, I think it's technically a figure, but it's a, uh, it's a statue to me. Yeah, it's a statue. Yeah. Star Wars Unleashed. Um, and I have to these. And, I've been staring at that the whole time. Oh, yeah. He's got like a Matrix Neo thing going on. He's uh, he's uh, he's amazing. And I, like I said, I have uh, General uh, Grievous is one, also one of my favorites. If you had never watched the original cartoon before the cartoon of Clone Wars, I don't, it's, I don't know where it was originally. I guess it's on Cartoon Network or something, but you can watch it yeah. on YouTube. And it's a totally different art style, totally different thing. Yeah. You know, Grievous Power is like, Pope girl. Yeah. And uh, so that's awesome, some, brother. That's some stuff I was going to show real quick. All right, cool. So, um, <laughs> shush, shush, shush. <laughs> all right. So I'll do another speed lightning round thing. Um, some of you guys were showing some books. So I'm going to, I'm going to just show uh, just a couple quick books, nothing crazy. Uh, old school or valuable or anything like that. But uh, from the new canon, like by far my favorite novel is Lost Stars by uh, by Claudia Gray. So I, I have to, to just give a shout out to this particular novel. It's it's one of the earlier ones that came out when, when Disney, um, you know, bought Lucasfilm or whatever, and they started doing these new canon novels. But it's still my favorite. Um, so if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. And I liked it so much that I also bought the manga adaptation. So oh, there's, a manga, there's a manga oh, adaptation. It's really cool. And I, and I read through the whole manga adaptation as well. So I got to win the lottery. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, these are just cover price books so you can get anywhere. You know what I mean? Like lost stuff. These are like, I got this just at a bookstore. You know what I mean? Not even a comic book store. Uh, and then this one I did get at a, at a comic book store. I actually got this at Neil Adams comic book store, which is weird. But uh, in, in Burbank, California. 
but it's a manga adaptation from Dark Horse um, of, uh, of A New Hope. So there you go. Neat. You Luke, you get Luke and Old Ben manga style. It's really, really cool. So yeah, so those are some quick books. I got and one. then, all right, what should I show? I got I got some modern comic books, and then I got the rest of my Star Wars slabs. What should I show real quick? Give the people the modern the slabs. The modern slabs? Modern? Yeah, that's what slabs. <laughs> all right. Uh, Whatever. All right, slabs. All right, so I'll just do these as quickly as I can. So I got I got a few uh, you know when Star Wars relaunched uh, in twenty late twenty fourteen early twenty fifteen uh, I have a lot of those variants I guess some of them are slab some of them, a lot but a lot of them are raw so but I have this one this is the John Tyler Christopher variant mm -hmm. for uh, for Star Wars number one oh that's awesome that's cool. so cool definitely one of those quirkier ones oh, uh, this is the uh, Greg Land. Uh, a sketch variant for uh, Dynamic Forces for Star Wars number one, nine eight. Nice. This is uh, Carol showed this earlier. This is the Alex Ross yeah. variant. Mine is not a nine point six. It's a nine point six. Which was a nine eight. But what are you gonna do? Nine point six. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love you know I love his take on the original Star Wars number one. Uh, this one. So this one, uh, this one became a hot book on like the CBC, CBSI Hot Ten or whatever like that. Like people couldn't find it, it disappeared off the shelf. It's the Rod Reese yeah. one in twenty five variant mm -hmm. for the adaptation. So for whatever reason, this one became a ghost, and you can't you can't find it anymore. Just and not this, a lot of them made. I mean, you know, yeah. a lot of people are getting adaptation, then it's the one in 25. Exactly. So any adaptations where they have ratio variants, those just get gobbled up quickly. Um, I, I was really hoping for a 9.8 on that, but it came back in 9.6. Other one of those scenarios. Um, so this is Star Wars issue number two. Um, oh. Yellow label, signed by uh, Howard Chaykin. Um and and Steve uh, Leoella did the who did the inks. Uh, this is Star Wars number seven slab that are nine six. Love the colors on those books. Yep. Star Wars number nine slab that are nine two. We this is the reprint. Yeah, so, that white a rectangle in the bottom. Yeah, the white. So this is one that I'm looking to you know whatever eventually trade or. Is that nine? What's up? That's number nine. Number nine, yeah. Uh, then I got number ten. Also, Star Wars number ten. Slab that are nine eight, or not a nine eight, nine six. Uh, this is the original The Last Jedi from yeah. the actual comic book run, Star Wars number forty nine, uh, at a at a nine six. So there it is. And then the last slab I will show before my turn is done is uh, a pretty funny one. This is Ewoks, number 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that one, man. So this actually has John Romita art. 9-4? 9-4, four. Four, yeah. But yeah, this is actually John Romita artwork. So uh, oh, That's cool. I love up? the Ewoks, man. I don't care what anyone says. What's up here on the kid? I'm feeling better. I had food poisoning this last weekend, so I was kind of fighting that. But uh, yeah, so there you go. That was my speed round. Uh, anybody else have anything else they want to show? I, I, I don't want to keep you guys on all night, but I still got my comic. <laughs> you want to show some comics? If it's not my turn, anybody else got a? No, well, I don't know. I don't know what else. Every what everybody else has as far We're as good. So go for it. Okay, Dorkies, you're good. good. Yeah. 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 All right, Tacoma, go wild. Show as right. much stuff these, as you want. These are flat yeah. and made of paper, even though they're not comics. This is uh, Star Wars G. Um, Crossing the prequels in the original trilogy. These are uh, 41 cent stamps, I think. So just before they started doing forever stamps, these were issued in like 97 or no, 2007. Sorry. JP is back. Hey, sorry, JP. Sorry, I think you This was from England. My friend sent it to me. This came out about three or four years ago. Um, Force Awakens. Uh, actually, no, it's um, Force Awakens and uh, Force and Force. Yeah, Force Awakens. And then this was something Target was given out when they were selling with one of the newer movies, just a sheet of stickers. Um, so probably my pride and joy of Star Wars comics is right here. 
Um, oh yeah, first oh, experience wow. with Sofitato. I was so proud of you when you got that. I was so so when I when hey, I John. when I got this man, I I think I paid like twenty five or something, and I was I was thinking that was a lot then. That was like three years ago. Um, then I bought another it's one. Five twenty five now, something like that. Yeah, I bought I bought one recently, um, right when the news hit. And uh, and and was able to get it at like the 140 price and sell it for nice. 20 price. So that was that was like I don't do a lot of like flipping like at that level, but that one I was like jumped on it. Oh, yeah. Is there a variant? Is there a variant of that too? There is. There's a newsstand, yeah. and yeah, then there's a variant just from about a thousand. That's like ridiculous. Um, so I'm hearing, and you guys tell me what you're hearing because it's all you're just hearing stuff. But Floney and Eckstein. Are being very cagey and um, Rosario Dawson. It might be that it's not going to be season two of The Mandalorian, and they're, I'm hearing hints of an actual show mm -hmm. with Ahsoka and maybe Sabine coming up. And as I don't player. know, it's all it's all speculation. I always thought it was now. a show. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was. Anything uh, lead into a show. I drool over speculation when it comes to Star Wars, so it's all Me too. Um, Maybe I missed her from the beginning, but I always thought it was a show. Yeah. Okay. For, with her and, I think it would be uh, a, a missed opportunity if it wasn't a full fledged show with yeah. somebody like Rosario Dawson. But yeah, just, yeah. just some beautiful. Um, I love that cover, dude. Beautiful. Is that the fourth print? Is that the fourth? That would be awesome, yeah. though. Sorry, those two shows if they were just two separate, but they kind of combine the times. Oh, you yeah. Know, like yeah. Um, Kieran Gillen, man, the way he wrote this, there's so many panels in these um Darth Vader from 2016 <laughs> where it's just Darth Vader silent. Looking off, you can't tell what he's thinking. And it was so evocative of the the actual original trilogy of like just what is going on in this guy's head. Because throughout twenty five issues, you don't know if he's after Luke Skywalker because he's found out that Luke is his son and he wants to reconnect, or if he's after Luke Skywalker because the Empress has killed Luke Skywalker. Like right. because so much is behind the mask that it just it's a brilliant series. Um, and because she shows up, yep. Afra, here's I think that's the second. I'm a big fan. Movie. I'm a big fan of both Volume One and Volume Two, the Darth Vader. Yeah, those, those yeah. are my two favorite Star Wars comic ones. Volume yeah. Three is pretty good. This was Volume uh, Three is pretty good so far, but it's only been a couple issues. Yeah, this was a nice variant to nice. You know, the last issue, twenty five. This is my favorite comic of all time because my son drew it for me for Father's Day a few uh, years ago, uh, including oh my God. Donald the nice. Hutt. I really appreciate that one. Um, I kept these stickers. Charles Soule had these out on his, his uh, table. This is the last variant. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I've kept those silly stickers on the back of this just because. Um, and that's the second series um, of the final. Oh. And then there was... This one, this guy, it, it sort of getting a little bit of spec. He was um, not a Jedi, but not a Sith, but just like kind of chilling yeah. on his own. Great, great issue. I can't Vader, remember. Uh, Vader goes and takes him out, essentially. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. This is why I need an upgrade, because this is a beat up um, reprint of a reprint. Now, I must have sold it. Do you know it. which, which uh, reprinting it is? Or? I can't, I think it's. You have to open it up, basically. Uh, da, 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 da. This is a reprint of a previously published issue. That's all it says. Um, all right, no worries. Yeah. So my number two was uh, was signed by Steve Lealoha, but on the inside, you know, like in, in just regular pen the yeah. way we used to back in the days. And then I got shaken to sign it, and then I think I sold it by accident because I had a second number two, and I sold the wrong one. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to point out. The original Star Wars run by Jason Aaron, the mm -hmm. issues where they show Ben trying to talk to um, Luke, at, uh, Luke's parents, uh, or foster parents, Lars and um, Baru, or Owen and Baru, um, and, and they're just like, F you, Ben. We don't want anything to do with you or your Jedi. Get out of here. It's just a great like three-issue um, story arc. And then this one in 29, Yoda like battles this planet. And it's just, it's one of the stories where it's all about just Yoda and the way he thinks and not Yoda connected to like 
cloudy, the future is. It's like he actually does something. Um, being a kid, just love that uh, that cover. Classic photo right. cover, yeah. And then you showed that off already. Yeah. Great one. What is that, like a breakfast, uh, Adventures in Babysitting uh, homage cover or something? It's like a movie poster. Oh, is uh, it an movie? homage to a movie? Yeah, it actually yeah. does feel like it could be that. I wasn't aware. I, I always love this cover. Yeah, I showed off my top 50 yeah. covers. And this is the first yeah. appearance of Scar Squadron, who are like a bunch of meat stormtroopers that don't, they kind of little have a little bit of attitude like the bad batch of clones. Right. Uh, so the Star Wars was a Dark Horse comic just before Dark Horse lost yeah. the right. And it reprinted or it, it told the story from Lucas's original manuscript before like he got writers to help him change it up. And this was a variant to number one, which I thought was really cool. That's really cool. I've never seen anybody show that. I have the regular yeah, one that's with the trade dress. Yeah. Box, but I don't have that, that version variant. I don't, I've never seen anyone show that. Uh, this is, I believe, this is the first appearance of Mara Jade. And Thrawn. Yeah. Oh, and Thrawn? I think it is Thrawn, too. Oh. And unfortunately, I need to upgrade because it's tick to heck. Um, yeah, that's Thrawn's first appearance. A couple really just great um, Adam Hughes covers on Legacy. Ooh, nice. Got a great Adam Hughes uh, Princess Leia in my modern pile. Oh, nice. Here's um, the first cameo of Sabine, Ezra, and the Rebels gang. This is the mm -hmm. Rebels gang, number one. Canon one, yeah. Yeah, and then and that that Kane and the Last Padawan is just such a great series. Uh, it, it just, I, I really liked it because I think Mr. Garrell was talking about it earlier. And yeah, Chris Barrett's a fan of it also. I, I, uh, I, I've, I've had it on my Marvel Unlimited list to, to get through forever, and I just need to <laughs> fuck up and do it. There's Afro number one. It's uh, Kieran Gillen's little thingy there. Nice. And then um, another one that I love, this is another super underrated story. I might actually do this one tomorrow night on Winding Comics at night. It's, it's a funny book. I it, like it. It's, it's, you know, but it's also very deep. It's got it's right. very deep. The droids are slaves, and this is the first canon piece of material to come to terms with the slave status of droids in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. And so it's it's really, really great. A few more here. Sorry, guys. I, I, no like, I like Star Wars. Um, Adi Granov, this would be my absolute favorite um, Star Wars cover, except he did this one. Ooh, that's oh, awesome. Wow. Which I just That's I, beautiful. I yeah. die for that. I die for that cover. Um, another one that I just think is so underrated is this Star Wars 50 cover. That's is a great it, cover. See closely, there's like all the TIE fighters. And is that Joe Casada or is that somebody else? That is, um, I think it's Salvador. It's, no, it's Kevin and Cooley. Kevin and Cooley. Oh, Giuseppe Kevin and Cooley. There you go. And then I even like it better in the red second print. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so nice. So nice. Man, I'm going to have to start collecting Star Wars comics now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Dude, Dude, I, really I love, good reads. I, um, I love the reads and the covers. There's so many nice covers. Like, wow. I think that this will be my last one here. I think this is uh from the newest. Sorry, from the newest series. I just like yeah. this. I like that one. I got that. Jackson the Space Bunny is is chilling out in the background there, and they're like, "There is another." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank all you. All right, well, dude. Next great time, stuff. My uh, I got it all out. It felt good. <laughs> all right, well, JP. Kid, like. Inviting your friends over to come look at all my toys. I know that's exactly <laughs> absolutely, and, and and seeing the toys you guys have that I don't is, is just as much fun. Yeah, that's awesome. And you I know, know JP like left and then he that. came back. I love it. I love I love <laughs> people. I love people returning to show more Star Wars. Well, I, the dog was like whining in the background, so I had to <laughs> real quick. So. Um, I'll show a few more pops, and then I do have a couple books I'll show. I don't have many Star Wars books, and one of the best ones isn't even here at the moment, but a few more pops. Um, I did get, like, from that Smuggler's Bounty, this was a chase, uh, one of the early chases they did before they even did stickers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just kind of a cool one. That was from the Force Awakens stuff. Then maybe my favorite Force Awakens one. Oh. Uh, the yes, Bloody yeah. Finn, uh, or FN2187. I'm um, not a big fan of what they did with Finn after this movie, but I love that pop. Nothing? Yeah. <laughs> um, then I do have, like, 
the 2015 San Diego Comic Con Chrome uh, C3PO. Very nice. The, let's see a couple more. I have an ECC uh, Muff Tack from. Wow. City. Wow. And uh, a little bit of Bosk. Yes. Yeah. So you got you got to like Boss, and then um, turn the Jedi Luke here, the hooded Luke from that's my favorite one. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorites too. And then I seen the Dorkery, or I think the Dorkery's had him in the background. I do have yeah. the, the three set with the Rancor. <laughs> um, so, Sweet. so, and then I have a couple comic books I'll show, and then I'll wrap up here. So everybody's been showing their copy of this. Um, nice. And then I have a copy of the one in 25 of this oh. currently at DS, uh, getting pressed to go to CGC. Mm -hmm. And then Sweet. the other one also is my copy of Dr. Afro number one, signed by cover artist Ashley Witter. And she ended up doing most of this run, but this was a variant for number one. Oh, oh nice. So, <laughs> so, yeah, that was it. That was it. That was all the stuff I'd taken out. So. That's awesome, dude. Thanks that for coming cool, back man. for showing those. Uh, since both you and Tacoma just showed some moderns, I'll just finish up with the rest of the moderns that I pulled real quick. Now, this is this is unofficial, okay? This is not actual Star Wars, Marvel, Disney canon. This is an indie. This is an independent comic book called Old Man Skywalker, okay? This is done by Daniel Warren Johnson. So he, it's like self print. Like you, you can only get it from him at conventions. He had these at New York Comic Con last year at his at his booth. Um, and this one is actually signed and remarked on the inside by Dan Daniel Warren Johnson uh, and was given to me as an AOK -okay by, um, by Chris. I got issues, um, whom I also AOK'd at that convention. So he got me back with this, um, which is super cool. Um, so it's a, this is a very rare comic and, you know, something you can't That's easily get. Um, yeah. Right? Old Man Skywalker. It's so cool. So I wanted to show that, give that a little bit of love. This is one of my favorite uh, modern Star Wars comic book covers that's kind of under the radar, I, I feel. It's it's um, a variant cover to uh, Star Wars uh, issue number 67. And it's, you know, old school Princess Leia with, you know, modern General Leia, like kind of juxtaposed, juxtaposed on top of each other. And uh, this is Bill Sienkiewicz. So um, one of my... One of my favorite artists, and this is just a masterful work, uh, in my opinion. I love that. Is book. she wearing her big ring in that photo? Is she what? Is she wearing her big fat ring in that photo? I don't know. I can't see. Looks like it. I got one. Think so. Yeah, I think so. It's. I mean, he's got a very abstract style, so like things start like blending and merging into each, you know, in, into each other in that bottom part yeah. of the of the painting, but. Um, Definitely one of my favorites, uh, favorite variants. Um, thank you, Thomas for Thomas. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this one's uh, J. Scott Campbell variant. This was done by the Cargo Hold retailer. Uh, so this is a J. Scott Campbell variant for uh, Star, Wars, Star Wars number one. Cool. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know uh, that existed. Right? It's a, so this was a store exclusive for the Cargo Hold, which is a comic toy and collectibles like retailer. Um, I've never been to one. I don't, I'm not even sure where they're, where they're based, but yeah, they got this, uh, J. Scott Campbell to do their cover. Uh, let's see, uh, games, uh, this is the GameStop variant for, uh, Star Wars number one. Love that. Nice. Nice. So wow. good. Uh, no, that's great. Right. Greg, to Greg Horn, dude. I love, he, yeah. he killed it. That'd be a really awesome poster. That looks like, uh, yeah, it's kind uh, of like a war, yeah, yeah, that, war art. Yeah, that looks awesome. It's, I love this one, dude. Um, that's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I teased this one earlier. Uh, this is a uh, so this is the Dark Horse series, Star Wars Rebel Heist. This is the second issue. Uh, this is a mini series. But yeah, this is a fantastic Princess Leia from Adam Hughes. Yep. Love that. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Uh, I found this at the Koch Comics warehouse in Brooklyn, like this crazy warehouse. Uh, with millions of comic books in uh, dusty boxes. Uh, pulled this out of one of them and saved it. So, yeah, awesome, awesome book. 
right there. Um, this one, I believe I got this one from TJ or maybe TJ, I think donated this to an auction. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. But it's a giant size X-Men number one, uh, <laughs> homage, homage cover by Mike Perkins. This is a, so this is a variant Star Wars number one. Uh, and it's signed by Mike Perkins right there. But yeah, GSX-1 uh, homage cover. Really, really cool. Love that one. Uh, let's see. And then I will wrap it up with uh, some of the variants or just some of the new Star Wars number one books. This is just the standard A cover signed by Charles Soule. This is the one that uh, I think uh, Tacoma showed, right? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Uh, signed by Charles Soule. And then this is the uh, the the uh, 40th anniversary of uh, cool. Empire Strikes Back uh, variant signed by Charles Soule. So those are all the current run, current volume of uh, Star Wars number one. So yeah. So those are, that'll be uh, that'll be the way I wrap up right there. I showed a lot of stuff. Most of my stuff's comic books. Like I have to show it. See. It was there. Had to grab it. <laughs> show it. Awesome. That's awesome. The jetpack. Okay, so oh, the jetpack. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all okay. right. I well, just, that was one we was sitting right there, and I didn't. <laughs> oh, there's a kitty. Nice. No, I... so funny something. story. I left the room for a second to put socks on because I'm freezing. And uh -oh. she was sitting outside the door wanting in. She has her Star Wars toy with her. Look, what? Hold on. He has Chewy, Chewy Mouse. Uh, that's cool. Awesome. Oh. Chewbacca Mouse. Uh, Just like she was awesome. sitting outside the door wanting in with her Chewbacca toy. She's got to show it off. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else want to show? Does anybody else want to show anything? I got this. I'll show this real quick. That's so this cool. is the official poster magazine of Star Wars Episode One. One side Sweet. is our there's that is this. official. <laughs> yeah, it's official. And when you open it up, it has all these different posters. And I guess the big poster is a big giant Darth Maul. My son has not seen this because he'd want me to take it apart. And that was the plan <laughs> when I got it, but then they were so cool. And then here's the heroes one. So there's a villains and a heroes. Nice. Same thing. Oh, very cool. And then my last thing I would just say is that if you're still a non believer of the Star Wars world, there's so much different media that you can do. Like I said, the cartoon earlier. But I would say when I got back into collecting a year and a half ago, all the Star Wars books from that point to this have been awesome. Like I, I was looking yeah. over my wall over here. The TIE Fighter series is pretty recent. It was good. Darth Vader yeah. one you guys are talking about. The Obi-Wan and, Kino uh, and uh, Anakin books were good. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one, the Thrawn, it was a small uh, run series. But I really enjoyed the, even the Thrawn comic that came out. Uh, it was a really good read. So there's a lot of different ways that you can you can – you can ingest the Star Wars world, and uh, yeah, and a lot of that stuff is on Marvel Unlimited oh. and stuff. If you if you have that, it's it's pretty accessible. Um, of course, there's trade paperbacks for pretty much everything, right? Like trades. Um, so like I've read a lot of the stuff on Marvel Unlimited and through trade that I did that I didn't you know have in single issue or whatever, and then I you know restarted collecting in single issue like at some point in the middle of the Jason Aaron run. Yeah, and I, I said something on Instagram one time that my son, he got a, um, a trade in his uh, library. And since then, I've been harassing him, but then the, the virus stuff happened because I was like, right. I'm bringing those trades home from the library. But there was a Star Wars one, and I did not realize there's a scene in there that's really cool, and Darth Vader's standing there, and, and uh, oh, oh, Boba Fett shows up, and he gives him the name of the farm boy. And, oh, yeah. Yep. That's yep. And he, and that's he a great scene. Away, and then he just turned around and looks, and he starts seeing all the shattering of the window he's looking out mm -hmm. of. And I was like, that is actually a really cool moment. That that's how he found out, knew he found out, was like shattering the windows around him when he realized that his son was, he had a son, he was alive, and he was right there. It was there cool. was even, there was, a, there was a scene between Boba Fett and Luke, like kind of a battle scene in the main Star Wars title that, uh, that um, what's his, uh, John Cassidy drew, drew, drew that, uh, the interiors. Of uh, which you know you'd only know if you actually if you if you read the comic. all these little tidbits you got to go around. Definitely a lot of tidbits in yeah, there. So much. Star Wars and Disney they know how to keep us uh, uh, filling their coffers. That's for sure. For sure. Yeah. What's up, Junior uh, Perez in the house? And uh, what's up, Tricky Trapster? Uh, I showed some original art earlier, Tricky Trapster. I don't know what the time code is, but um, if you want to rewind uh, and find it, 
uh, it, it'll be in there. But I think we, we, I think we all showed a ton of great stuff, a lot of nerdy stuff, some great comic books, some great toys, figures, I, statues. I had a full blast. display, full displays yeah. from the dorkeries, like yeah, mind blowingly yeah. oh, yeah. stuff. Double, insane. Uh, I really have some great stuff. Some amazing pops. I mean, lots of good stuff. Uh, some cool artwork. Um, uh, some that uh, World War II art was awesome. That World War II World photography War II. mashup kind of stuff. It's crazy good, man. Uh, a lot of cool knickknacks. You know, a medal for life. <laughs> um, the Han dice. You know, waiting waiting for me to get be a car owner, but otherwise it'll just hang out back there. Um, but dude, uh, thanks. I want to thank everybody for, uh, for, for joining me here for this little celebration of, uh, Star Wars nerdiness on, uh, on the star, the Star Wars holiday. I, I, I never thought I'd get to do something like this. So um, awesome. yeah, I, thanks I, for I, putting I, this together. Yeah. I thanks, agree. thanks for hanging out with you guys. You can uh, celebrate my culture with me, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a quick plug for Mr. Garrel tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern, uh, the Hunter Show, on, uh, on his channel. I'm gonna probably go uh, hang out there after getting some food, some uh, in between this and that, uh, and uh, sub up to the Dorkeries, please. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Sub up to Tacoma Comics, please. Uh, don't sub up to Baker JP. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, no, definitely sub up to Baker J and JP, uh, and shout out to Discovery Bay Comics JB, who is who kicked things off here with us, and then he gracefully moved into the chat to allow us to, to allow me to e more easily produce the show. Frankly, it's that whole <laughs> like in and out thing that thing you're confusing. But uh, and th thanks everybody for hanging out in the chat. We really appreciate it. Uh, I know this was a long show, so uh, enjoy some Star Wars. And uh, I'll catch you in a year from now for the next May the Fourth uh, show because I'm not about to turn into a Star Wars channel every day. But but I will I will try to make this show happen moving forward if I can. So awesome. thanks everybody. We'll May see you soon. Take care. May the Force be with you. Be with you. Always.